An orthographic projection is certainly the most used representation technique in engineering drawing. Its purpose is to represent an object in space, and therefore a 3D object, on a drawing sheet, and therefore on a plane in a 2D space. The objects represented can be points, straight lines or segments, planes, plane figures, solid figures, which we shall divide into two groups, solids with edges and solids of revolution. How can we represent on a plane, that is our drawing sheet, something that has three dimensions? The answer is not simple, and each representation technique used in engineering drawing has its own method. Some methods are simpler, others more complex both for what concerns creating the drawing and for what concerns understanding the drawing once it's finished. For example, a perspective drawing is certainly one of the most difficult things to create, but understanding the drawing once it's finished is simple, even for those who are not into engineering drawing. This is because the three-dimensionality of the objects is still present in the drawing, The same goes for an axonometric projection. The main difficulty with an orthographic projection is that the speciality and three-dimensionality of the object are completely lost in the drawing, and this makes the drawing difficult both to create and to understand for those who are not used to using this representation technique. Let's look at the basics first. Let's imagine we have an object in space and we want to represent it on our drawing sheet with the orthographic projection technique. In an orthographic projection, we use three representation planes, which are perpendicular, or if you prefer, orthogonal, to each other. The three planes are called projection planes. They are in order of importance. The horizontal plane the vertical plane, the profile plane. The horizontal and vertical planes intersect through a line called XY line. The two lines that divide the profile plane from the other two planes are generally left unnamed. Moreover, the third projection plane may not be used, as the information provided by the first two planes is generally enough to understand and describe the speciality of the object. Therefore, let's leave aside the third projection plane and concentrate, at least for now, only on the first two. The object is represented on these two planes through two lines called projectors that project the object perpendicularly to the planes from each vertex. This explains the name of this representation technique orthographic projection. On the two representation planes, the object is projected through its vertices, and therefore by points. The orthographic projection of a point on a plane is defined as the foot of the perpendicular drawn from the point to the plane. The orthographic projection on the horizontal plane is called first projection, and is indicated with the symbol first. The orthographic projection on the vertical plane is called second projection and is indicated with the symbol second. The orthographic projection on the profile plane, although we haven't talked about it yet, is called third projection and is indicated with the symbol third. We have said that the third projection plane is often unnecessary, but it is not possible to use fewer than two projection planes for instance, just the horizontal or the vertical plane, as one plane is insufficient to describe the position of a point in space. For example, in this picture we can see how, if we just use the projection of these points on the horizontal plane, we could believe that point A and point B are coincident, but actually they are not. It is therefore necessary to use at least two projection planes. Once we have found the orthographic projection of each vertex of the solid on the horizontal and on the vertical plane, we'll just have to link 
the projection of the points located on the same projection plane to get the orthographic projection of the whole figure. From the picture, we can see how the dimensions and measurements of the objects represented on the three, often two, projection planes remain unchanged. This is something not present in other representation techniques. The first projection shows us the top view, that is the object as it looks when it's seen from above. The second projection shows us the front view, that is the object as it looks when it's seen from the front. The third view on the profile plane shows us the object as it looks when it's seen from its left side. But for us, it is still a little early to talk about the representation of actual objects. So let's start from the simplest geometric entity that exists, namely the point. The point is always indicated with the capital letter of the alphabet. From the point, we draw two straight lines, each one perpendicular to a projection plane, thus obtaining its orthographic projection, A first and A second. From these two projections, we'll draw two farther lines perpendicular to the XY line. These segments are called reference lines. The one on the HP indicates the overhang of the point from the VP. The one on the VP indicates its height, that is its distance from the HP. As you can see, the reference lines meet on the XY line. The horizontal and vertical planes divide the space into four sections, often called quadrants. These sections are called first, second, third and fourth, counterclockwise. Also, the HP and the VP are divided by the XY line into two half planes, for a total of four half planes. The vertical half plane above the XY line is conventionally positive, while the one below is negative. The horizontal half plane on the right or in front of the XY line is conventionally positive, while the one on the left or behind is negative. As you can see, things are completely similar to what happens on the plane when we talk about orthographic Cartesian axes and the four sectors into which they divide the plane. Now, the problem is that on the drawing sheet such three-dimensionality is unachievable, and that's because we have to represent on a single sheet, and therefore a single plane, the information given by not one but two mutually perpendicular projection planes. We solve the problem by rotating the horizontal projection plane so that the positive horizontal half plane overlaps with the negative vertical half plane and so that the negative horizontal half plane overlaps with the positive vertical half plane. This way the HP and the VP are now on a single plane, the drawing sheet, divided into two parts by the XY line. So, above the XY line is the negative horizontal half plane and the positive vertical half plane. Below the XY line is the positive horizontal half plane and the negative vertical half plane. We'll get a more precise idea of this topic in the next video, in which we will discuss in detail how to draw an orthographic projection of a point in space. If you like this video, you can find the transcript of this lesson in my blog dedicated to engineering drawing. Also, on the blog there are many other lessons and lots of educational material to download. The address is aliceappunti.altervista.org slash blog. The link is present in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the button beneath the video. This will help me to grow my channel and will give me the enthusiasm I need to upload many more new educational videos. Thank you.